Texas hit Rupert. Our big chance. Maybe next week your name will go up in lights. Rupert, the talk of the town. You, you won't let me down, will you, Rupert? You'll do everything just like I taught you, huh? Ah, yes. Now, now how about, how about a dress rehearsal? Here. The curtain is up. You're on the stage. Stay right there when I tell you. Now, now get ready for our song and dance. Are you all set? Now. Now we've got to do the dance in unison. And it's got to be perfect. For everything depends on how we do it. Now, you all set? Here we go. <laughs> so glad to see you. Go have your bed. Oh, not too good, but everything's going to change now. Here, sit down. How are you, miss? Flo, this is Joe Mahoney. He used to work out of my father's office. And the best lion tamer in the business. <laughs> Weren't you? Go on with you. Divided, I'm sure. Thank you. Well, what's this new act that you wired me about? Well, here it is. Now, greet the man, Rupert. <laughs> you mean... That's it? That's it. A squirrel? Sure. You wouldn't fool me, would you? Oh, Phil, he's the great performer. Something like Rupert only happens once in a million years. I'm sorry, Joe, but I'm not interested. He's, he's not box office. Oh, come on, honey, we're late. Yeah, yeah but, but Phil, you haven't seen what he can do. Well, I've seen enough already. Joe, look, a lion is a big, savage beast. He's... Vicious, ruthless, a bloodthirsty killer from the faraway jungles of darkest Africa. So he's box office. But a little pipsqueak thing like a squirrel that anybody can see any place in any park, any time is just... A... Besides, he's so small they never see him from the balcony. But, Phil, I tell you, Rupert is almost human. Come on, honey, we're late. But just a minute. Look, Joe, I'd love to give you a break. I know things have been tough, but... Well, he just ain't box office. Goodbye, Mr. Dingle. I'll pay every cent that I owe you. Good morning, you should. Take a good look around. Some of your new pals. Now I want you to go on and get acquainted with them. Come on. That's it. Now don't be stubborn about this. Go on. Oh, oh to be sure. It's a silly outfit. There you are. They would have laughed at you. Now go on, go on, yes, I know you don't want to, go on. I know you'll be happy here. I know they're going to love you. You'll be the life of the party, doing the somersaults and all the cute little tricks that I taught you. Go on, I tell you. Beat it, I tell you. Beat it, I tell you. What shall I do? Stay box office. Papa, do you think we might have some money in that Chicago account? Oh, I heard from that bank last week. I think I got the letter with me. 
Yeah, here it is. It says, Dear Mr. Amendola, this is the last monthly statement we will mail you. We feel it is hardly worth three cents to tell you you have two cents. Let's get going. Huh? Look at all those lucky people hurrying home with arms full of packages. They'll have turkey for Christmas, packages under the tree. Don't envy them, Rosalinda. But every one of them faced a Christmas like us at some time or another. And besides, it ain't Christmas yet. Who knows, old Saint Nick may have a bundle for us, too. But the trouble is, we ain't got no address he can deliver him to. Amandola, the Amandola Trio. Joe, Joe Mahoney. Joe, darling. Now, now, don't tell me this is little Rosie. Yeah, she's certainly growing fast, a little too fast. Why, it seems like only yesterday I bought her them shoes, and already she's complaining they're too small. And with you, Amandola, how's the act been going? Us? Great, sensational. Why, if I made any more money, I'd have to buy myself a wallet. <laughs> and you know something, Joe? No. We've played the circuit so many times, just for a change. We booked the European tour. Europe! London, Paris, Budapest, and in India, we gave a performance the audience will never forget. Why? Because they were elephants. <laughs> oh, no, no. Respect for that joke, it's older than you. <laughs> oh, sorry, Joe. You see, you haven't been doing so good, huh, Joe? Well, to tell you the truth, it has been a little tough. You don't have to tell me. It's the same with us. We haven't worked since Rosie cut her second teeth. Joe, do you live around here? I do. I, I did. I just moved out less than a half hour ago. Oh, is the place rented yet? I don't think so. How much rent did you pay? I didn't. But if you got $32, you can move right in. How long did you live there without paying any rent? Six months. Just what we're looking for, something out of the high rent district. Joe, it's been good seeing you. Yes, and then you must drop in and see us soon, Joe. Yes, yes, thank you. Hey, wait! Wait for me! You better ask him where it is. We ain't got no time. Oh, Joe! Where is it? 322 and a half Maple Street. Just over there. Come on back. It's this way. Hey, wait for me. Merry Christmas. unseemly protrusion, but after reading this sign, I took the liberty of removing it. I don't think you're gonna need it anymore. You wanna rent this place? Well, we might work something out if you don't drag lawyers into this. Well, you better speak to my father about it. He's right next door. Oh. Oh, on uh, second thought, I can handle this myself. Come in. Be back in a minute. Good to be home. 
My name is Amandola. My name is Pete Dingle. Rosalinda. Joe Mahoney sent us. Oh? Well, that's okay with me, but uh, don't mention it to my father. Uh, the rent will be $32 a month. Well, uh, I don't mind electric bulbs that are unfrosted. And uh, I don't mind beds with springs that fight back. Or window shades that curl up like anchovies. But there's one thing I can't stand. Leaky faucets. Oh, do you mind? Not at all. Perfect. Well, Mama, you might as well start unpacking. This ain't exactly the bridal suite at the Waldorf, but who knows, if we give this place a good cleaning, we might find an extra room. <laughs> good cleaning is right. Look at all those cobwebs. Rosie, don't touch those cobwebs. They're probably holding the building together. Well, now that all the business has been taken care of, I'll... What you say, Mr. Amendola, my father, unfortunately, wants his money in advance. And a lucky man he is, too, your father. Having a son so gifted in the art of music. Oh, well, I, uh, just tut, go around. Tut, 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 I know. I, too, am a musician. And modesty compels me to admit that I play a pretty piano. And if necessary, I can even play an ugly one. <laughs> well, don't forget, feel free to drop in at any time. Well, thanks very much. Uh, now about the rent. Oh, I think I'm gonna like it here. Well, I hope so. Now, if uh, you don't mind, I'd like to change. Oh, no, not at all. I mean, uh... Well, I'll see you later. <laughs> well, Mama, I did it. Hey, look, Pa, I forgot his tuba. He'll be back, but if he don't, you can blow in it every night and announce dinner. <laughs> you realize what I've done? No rent in advance and a roof over our heads. <laughs> An awful big hole in the skylight. So what? If it snows, we'll be the only ones in town who'll have a white Christmas inside the house and out. <laughs> Hello, Pete. Hi, Dave. Hey, I think I got a letter for you. Oh? No, it's for your old man. I'll give it to him. Well, if I don't see you tomorrow, Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, same to you. Uh. Did you clean the place? Clean it? I rented it. Good. You can work if you make up your mind. Who'd you rent it to? Uh, their name is Amandola. There? Uh-huh. How many are there? Oh, just three. They're awfully nice people. Well, that's good for a change. I'll take the money. Uh, there's a mother and a father and a daughter. Okay, give me the $32. Uh, and, you know, they didn't even ask for any redecorations or repairing anything. You know, that saves us a lot of money, Pa. Pete, don't tell me you let them stay without paying. Oh, you're gonna get it. <laughs> They're awfully nice people. A mother and a father and a daughter. Yeah, you said that before. Look, son, I want that $32 right now. And if you don't get it, I'll go over and get it myself. And if I don't get it, out they go. But, Pa, I gave my word of honor we'd wait a couple of days. You don't want to break your own son's word, do you? Oh, there he goes again. Honor, charity, love thy neighbor, everything but money. Tell me, son, what did money ever do to you that you hated so much? I'll get it. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, you forgot to give me the key. The key? Oh, yes, yes, the key. Here it is. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. You're, uh, you're gonna stay, aren't you? Well, if my father... Who is it, Pete? Look, uh, don't go away. I'll be right back. Who was it? Oh, the, uh, the postman. Uh, it's for you. National Security Bank. Now, what are those chiselers worth? Uh, what is it? Oh, just an advertisement. Oh. Katie. Katie, Katie, come here. Katie, that worthless gold mine I invested in 10 years ago is paying off. Heavens, no. Look, here's a check for $1,500. And they say we're going to get the same amount each week from now on. Mercy. It's the day before Christmas, too, Frank. It's money from heaven. Yeah. 
We should go to church and pray. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, sure. But first, I'll go down to the bank and cash the check. I, I know that apartment isn't what you folks have been used to. But, you know, with a little paint and fixing it up, it... Uh... You mean you'll redecorate it? Well, I... I'll speak to my father about it. Oh, and Mother's been having a little trouble with the stove. It's awfully old. Well, we'll see what we can do about that, too. Uh, maybe get you another one. A new stove! Uh, shh! Is there somebody asleep in there? Uh, my father. Hmm. I mean, well, my father is a little reluctant about investing money. He has to be handled with kid gloves. Say, how about going for a walk? Not in these shoes, I wouldn't. They pinch my feet. Well, go get some others. I'll wait for you. It'll be a long wait. I haven't any others. Oh. Well, what size do you wear? I'm dreaming of a size four. Why? Stay right where you are. Not a word of this to a soul, Katie. Uh, not anybody, especially that lazy son of yours. If he finds out about it, he'll blow that blasted tube for the rest of his life. Mom, what size shoe do you wear? Six, why? Oh, never mind. Now, don't you go buying shoes for me for Christmas, because I've got two pairs already. <laughs> Isn't that nice of him? Not a nickel in his pocket and still thinking of buying me shoes. Oh. Just for that, Frank, I want you to buy a nice necktie for him and put it under the Christmas tree. He likes those hand-painted ones. I saw some perfectly lovely ones for only five dollars. Huh. Five dollars, eh? I'll get some paint out of the attic and paint one myself. They call it the Amandola Trio, the human pyramid. Papa balanced Mom on his shoulders, and then I stood on top of Mom was all done up like a little angel. Sounds exciting. Then Papa juggled, Mama sang, and I played the harp. Used to go over big. Only I started growing, Mama got heavier, and one day Papa's legs gave out. You mean he dropped you? <laughs> Four times in one week. The fourth time Mama broke her leg. You gotta hand it to Papa, though. He never broke a plate. He's a great juggler. Look, there's my father coming out of the bank. I wonder what he was doing in the bank. I've never been in the bank. Just to think of all that money in one place. We could go to price of the tree with seven dollars. Yesterday, four dollars. Now, what am I bid? Forty cents. Forty cents. Who make it a dollar? One dollar. I wish we were going to have a tree. Of course, with the moving and all. But we've talked enough about me. Tell me about you. Where do you work? I don't. All that is, I write music. Oh, does it pay? No. Then you don't work. Well, I don't have a job. Can't you find one? I've never looked for one. So what do you do for money? I don't need money. But suppose you were walking along with a girl and she wanted a, a malted milk, what would you do? Well, that would be pretty embarrassing. I'm sorry I said that, Pete. Come on, let's go home. Hey, folks, just two more left. Now, what am I bid for this one? Forty cents. Dollar and a half. A dollar and a half. Do I hear two? Dollar and a half once, a dollar and a half twice. Sold to this gentleman for a dollar and a half. And now for the last tree. All right, folks, it's your last chance. What am I bid for this one? Forty cents. Seventy-five cents. Seventy-five cents. Do I hear a dollar? A dollar? Will someone make it a dollar? Seventy-five cents once, seventy-five cents twice. A dollar. A dollar I've got. A dollar once, twice. Sold to this gentleman for a dollar. Here you are, buddy. Say, mister, would it be all right if I pay you forty cents now and the balance later? Sure, sure. Just take the elevator up to the 18th floor. That's our credit department. This is a cash sale, buddy. Do you want the tree or don't you? Hey, wait! Look, you can have the tree. Give me the 40 cents. Oh, thanks. I'll pay you the rest as soon as I can. I'll give you a week. If you don't pay it up by then, I'll find out where you live and take the tree back. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Why didn't you leave it at the bank while you were there? Uh, at the bank? Katie, you're not serious after all that happened to our little savings in 1929. No, sirree, they're never going to get any of my money again. I'm going to hide it right in this house. Katie, you better run over to the church and say that little prayer now. Frank, you're sending me away because you want to keep the hiding place a secret from me. Oh, no, it isn't you, Katie. It's Pete. You're too soft-hearted with that boy. I'm afraid that What's the use of money, anyway, if you hide it? Money's for buying things, to enjoy life, to have some pleasure. Ah, that's a lot of hooey. Money is for security, not to worry about the future, to enjoy sleep. All right, Frank, I'm going. And I don't care if you stick that blasted money up the chimney and let it smoke till it smells like a ham butt.
moving from one place to another, always moving, never having a place to call our home. Believe me, Lord, we've tried so hard. We've tried everything, everything. But it's so difficult to find a job for a human pyramid. You're our only hope, so it's up to you. Please. It was Christmas. We haven't even got a tree. No money to buy some little gifts. Not even a pair of shoes for Rosalinda. She must have those shoes, Lord. She needs them real bad. Tell me, Rosalinda, you still play the harp? Sure, why? Well, I think I'll compose something just for the harp and tuba. And I'm going to call it The Melody of Two Orphan Instruments. That's a cute title. Do you think they'll go together? I don't know. But I'm hoping. Understand a tree, presents. And look at it, Papa. A turkey and cranberry sauce and plum pudding and candy and nuts. And look, brand new shoes. But how? I don't understand. You couldn't have won it on a quiz program. We haven't got any phone. No, Papa, I didn't win anything. I... Mama, your wedding ring. You didn't hock your. No, I didn't hock anything. All I did. I know. You wired that drummer in Boston who had a crush on you. 
That sheik with the patent leather shoes and tuxedo. I remember what he said when we announced our engagement. If ever you needed anything... Papa, that was 22 years ago. I don't care if it was 100 years ago. I never trusted a guy with a tuxedo, especially a rented one. Oh, let Bob explain, Papa. No, the money didn't come from him. It came from... Here, Papa. You better sit down. Better loosen your collar, Papa. Rosalinda, bring Papa a glass of water. Papa, you love me, don't you? Of course I love you. And you trust me? You'd believe me if I told you something, wouldn't you? Even if nobody else in all the world would believe me, you would believe me, wouldn't you, Papa? Sure I would, Mama. Well, I was sitting right here in this chair, and I was praying. And, well, this money, $1,500, come floating right down through the hole in the skylight. Fifteen hundred dollars? From heaven? You do believe me, don't you, Papa? If you said it, I've got to believe you. Oh, Merry Christmas, Papa. Merry Christmas, Papa. <laughs> you see, Rosie, I told you old Saint Nick wouldn't forget us. All we needed was an address. Frank, this perfume is lovely. Dangerous. Such a big bottle. It must have cost at least ten dollars. Uh, it's not that dangerous. Oh, this is a terrific tie, Dad. Thanks again. Did you see the watermelons, Mom? They're hand-painted. Now, who's that? Merry Christmas, young man. Merry Christmas. May we come in? Oh, why, of course. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Why, Mr. Amendola, we have the exact same ties on. It could be a lot worse if we were girls wearing the same dresses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mom, Dad, this is Mr. and Mrs. Amendola and, and their daughter, Rosalinda. How do you? We're your new tenants. And the old tight season being upon us, we thought we'd drop in and pay you a visit. To pay what? A visit, Frank, a visit. Oh. Well, make yourselves comfortable. Oh, do sit down, Mrs. Hammond. Thank you. Mrs. I'm glad you brought your harp, Rosalinda. Can we sit right over here? Yeah, I'll stick around. That's a nice tree you got there, Mr. Dingle. Where did you get it? Molinaries? Uh-huh. Maybe we ought to go down there next week and make our payments together. Payments? Speaking of payments, Mr. Amendola, just what do you do for a living? Doesn't the name of Amendola suggest nothing to you? You surely must have seen us perform someplace. Florida in the racing season, Lake Placid in the winter season, or perhaps Africa in the malaria season. <laughs> yes, sir, Dingle, someday you'll be able to say the Amendolas were your tenants. <laughs> if I don't get my rent money, I'll be able to say that tomorrow. I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Dingle. Now, if you'll just hang your sock on a mantle, I'll drop in three months' rent. Keep the four dollars changed. Three months' rent in advance. Mr. Amendola, we're so glad you folks dropped in on us. Katie, get Mr. Amendola a chair. And some coffee and some cake, Katie. Where's the Christmas spirit? That's right. Where is the Christmas spirit? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. I love the excitement of Christmas. I'll never forget one Christmas Eve when I was a kid. I hung my stocking up on a mantle, went to bed, and when I woke up the next morning, what do you think I found on my stocking? My father's foot. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all soft. Oh, what fun it is to ride. Soft. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Another odd bush like that, Mr. Dingle, and I'll hide your electric trains. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all soft. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open soft. How do you like that? There's a guy going in business for himself. <laughs> Wait a minute. All together. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open 
Rosalinda brought her hop along, and she didn't bring it to slice hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> All right, Rosalinda. Here you are, Rosalinda. Thank you. Oh, I finished the melody for two orphan instruments. Want to try it? Sure. Set the music right over here, Pete. Okay. There you are. Thanks. Ready? Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> Of the world of fullest singers, Mr. Dingle. But did you ever hear of anyone doing a backflip in a bathtub? No. And you know the reason why? Because only a few of us are acrobats. Oh, acrobats. I'd just love to learn a few tricks. I'm always so dull when company comes. I can't do a thing. Can't you teach me a few things? Why, I'd be glad to teach you. Have you got anything around here we could rig up like a teeter board? Uh, a seesaw? Yeah. Oh, I think so. Let me see. How about a table leaf? You got one? Yes. Go get it. Great. Now get me a glass of water. trick is so simple, I taught it to Rosalinda when she was only three years old. Now you get up in that chair. I'll stand down at this end, place the glass of water on my head, and when I say go, you jump down at that end. I will then do a back somersault, light a cigarette in midair, and land in that chair without spilling one drop of water. Ready? Ready. Rosalinda, your hair, your dress. Gosh, you're beautiful. Thank you, Pete. May I have this, Pete? Oh, sure, sure. I wrote it for you. Look, somebody's coming to see us in a beautiful car. Rosalinda, go down and see who it is. It might be somebody important. Hello, I, uh, is 
Joe Mahoney home? Well, he's moved away. He has? Well, do you know where he went? Well, I'm afraid I don't. Oh, that's great. Well, what I do with this Christmas present I brought him? Here, it's yours. But Go I, ahead. Go but ahead. I it's really don't. Oh, it's just fruit and things. Uh, you live here? Yes. Alone? With my parents. Oh, well, that's nice. Uh, anything I can do for you? Well, my name is Phil Davis. I'm a friend of Joe Mahoney's, and I just... Phil dropped... Davis, the agent? Yes, that's me. Believe me, this is a pleasure. My name is Amandola. You've heard of the Amandola Trio, haven't you? You know, the human pyramid. Come in, come in. Now, don't pay any attention to this apartment, Mr. Davis. We just moved in yesterday. Not much of a place, but for certain reasons, it fascinates me. Oh, Mr. Davis, take a look at this poster. You're gazing on one of the greatest vaudeville acts of its time. And uh, the only reason we disbanded was because of my little daughter's rapid maturity. Oh, yes, I can see what you mean. Oh, Mr. Davis, I was just thinking, I can work alone. Why, I can out-juggle anyone in the business. And you know something? I can juggle 25 plates with one hand. And with the other hand, I pick up the broken ones. <laughs> Just a little joke I used to the act. <laughs> now, if you give me your undivided attention. That's good. That's great. How'd you do it? Huh? How'd you do it? What? Oh, <laughs> that's a trade secret. Well, do it again. Oh, yes, do it again, Papa. Rosalinda, you know the great Amandola never repeats twice. <laughs> well, that's very clever. I'll try and book you, Mr. Amandola. Sure, sure. Now, uh, how about you? About me? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to butt in, but the uh, coffee's ready. Oh. You know, a girl with your looks and figure should be in the limelight. And I'm just the man who can put you there. Said he as he twirled his black mustache and eyed the proud beauty. Who's he? Please. You were saying, Mr. Davis. Well, a girl like you should have a decent place to live. Not in a dump like this. What's good enough for my mother and father is... It's hardly good enough for a raving beauty like you. And Mr. Davis Please. here is just... Well, the coffee's ready. It's getting cold, and so is a cake. I'm sorry, but Mr. Davis is a very important Broadway agent. A Broadway chiseler. I beg your pardon. What was that? Oh, I know the type. Promises young girls expensive clothes, diamonds, furs, anything to make an impression. He didn't say those things. You did. Well, he was going to. What right has he got to call me a chiseler? Why, he doesn't even know me. I think he's jealous. Well, maybe he's got a case. Say, it's uh, Christmas and I'm all alone. How about me taking you out to a Chinese dinner tonight? Well, I'm sorry, but I was a... I'd love to. Father, may I go out with Mr. Davis? You better ask your mother. Oh, thanks a lot. You're too fat. You got up when only four came down. Just defies the laws of gravity. It's midnight. She isn't home yet. Mama, stop worrying. Nothing can happen to her. She's not alone. She's with a man. Mama, another miracle happened this afternoon. A miracle? I tried to juggle a few walnuts. One didn't come down. It just disappeared. Merci me. This is a strange house. Money comes down and walnuts go up. But I guess that's better than money going up and walnuts coming down. Frank. I've been 
Think about the Amendola family. Why should people who can afford to pay three months' rent in advance want to live in a dump like that? Frank, last night you couldn't sleep because they didn't pay their rent. Tonight you can't sleep because they did. For goodness sake, stop worrying and go to sleep. to check out of this town. Come to New York. Things can happen to you there, Rosie. Oh, let's not start that again, Phil. Oh, please. I'm crazy about you, Rosie. I'll do anything for you. Do you know any music publishers, Phil? Sure, dozens of them. Why? Well, I, I wrote some music. I think it's beautiful. If you could take it well, to I some... I didn't know you were a composer. <sighs> Melody for Two Orphan Instruments by Peter Dingle. Who's Peter Dingle? Oh, well, you see, well, I put a man's name on it because I knew no one would even look at it if they knew a girl wrote it. Well, I'll see what I can do. If it's any good, I'll try and have it published. Oh, thanks a lot, Phil. Well, <laughs> night. Wait a minute. Uh, see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sorry to wake up, Mr. Haggerty. Well, what's the matter, Pete? Somebody sick? Yeah, me. I want that job. Well, uh, do you want to start right now, or can you wait till tomorrow morning? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was afraid somebody else might get it. You see, Mr. Haggerty, I need money. Sure thing in the sixth at California today. Cut me in on 40% of the winnings and I'll give it to you. This one can't lose. It'll win in a walk. Yeah, and while our horse is walking, the others will be running. If you have another hot tip, Mulligan, leave it under the plate. Yes, sir? What's your best cigar? Oh, I got some good ones back here. Quarter apiece. Quarter apiece? How much does a whole one cost? <laughs> Just a little joke. About as little as I've heard. Pete. Hello. Hi. What'll it be? I'd, uh... I didn't know you worked here, Pete. Well, that's strange. It was in all the papers. But you remember once you told me you were opposed to work. Sure. I even remember I couldn't buy a certain girl a cool drink in a drugstore. Now, not only can I buy it, but serve it, too. What'll it be? Pete, you took this job on account of me. The girl I'm referring to only wanted a malted milk. Can we go now? Oh, it's you. Let's go, honey. I'd like a malted milk, Phil. Not in this dump, please. Goodbye. So long. Look, Pete, you're missing a great bet. That filly's sure to wind up in the money. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. How's that for a bargain? Only 49.50. But, Papa, what are we 
walk with a polar bear rug. This isn't an ordinary polar bear. Just watch. All you gotta do is twist the two then. Music, it's also a radio. Oh. You gotta do this for short wave. But we don't need it. Sure we do. It lends an air of quality to the place. Mama, what's a real home without a polar bear? But we must stop buying things. That $500 you have left has got to last. Oh, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. You know that Mr. Byfield who we bought these few pieces of furniture off? Well, I stopped by there today to look at the little piano we were talking about. And you know something? He isn't doing so well. Oh, Papa, I hope you didn't. It's not his fault that business is bad. Naturally, with the banks leaning on a place and no one to turn to. $500. Oh, Papa, all our lives you've been doing this. Whenever we get a little ahead, you'll meet someone who's in trouble and you just melt like chocolate in a baby's hand. I couldn't help it. He needed it. But, Mama, we got nothing to worry about. We still got that $100 I gave you yesterday. No. I mailed that money away for the unpaid bills we left in Chicago. That puts us right back where we were a week ago. That's right. All you gotta do is do what you did a week ago. Pray. Well, I am praying every hour of the day, but if it's more money you want me to pray for... Why not, Mother? It's worth a try. Well... Well, I... I just wouldn't have the nerve to ask again. Besides, it's selfish. But Papa just told us he helped somebody with it. That wasn't selfish. And besides, all you gotta do is ask and let heaven make up its own mind. Well, even if I could remember the prayer... You I... must remember, Mother, the same thing you said before. Well, I don't know. All I recall saying is that Rosalinda needs shoes, but now she doesn't need shoes. She has four pair already. But, Mama, when you say she needs shoes, that doesn't mean she really needs them. It's like stagehands in the theater playing dice. A guy says, baby needs a new pair of shoes. That doesn't mean she needs them. It's just a disfigurement of speech. Mm, all right. Bring me the little old rocker. I'll get it. I was sitting in it when it happened. Say it, Mama. Say it. Please help us. Rosalinda needs shoes. She needs them real bad. It's no use, Mama. The prayer won't be answered. Maybe it has been answered. The answer is no. Well, we're grateful anyhow. I guess I'd better take this rug back to the shop. Please forgive me for telling a lie. Rosalinda doesn't need shoes. Yes, you're praising cake, Mr. Amendola. Thanks. Oh, and here's a check. 
You are share of all profits for this month. Well, well. You cast your dough upon the waters, it circulates, and it comes back strawberry shortcake. Thanks, partner. Thank you, Mr. Amendola. Who was it, Papa? Petrushka, a baker. Uh, oh, Mama. Look. This is our share of the month's profit. How much did we decide to contribute to buy shoes for European children? Six hundred dollars. Why? Well, deposit this, and we can make it a thousand. Oh, that's fine. I'm telling you, it's all over town. This Amandola character gave one thousand and twenty-five dollars for kids' shoes. He lives in a stable and sleeps in the straw. The guy doesn't work. It don't add up. Where does he get the money? He gave two thousand five hundred dollars for European children. What line of business is he in? Nobody knows. When they moved in, they didn't have a nickel to their name. Two months later, he buys a shipload of shoes for farm kids. Now, how do you figure that? I'd like a super duper triple decker banana delight. Coming up. You know what I think? He's printing his own money right there in that shack of yours, Mr. Dingle. Well, I hate gossip. But I just heard from a friend of mine whose wife told him, and she swears it's true, that Amadola is a big gangster in hiding. And if I was you, Mr. Dingle, I'd notify the police right away. Notify the FBI. I saw it in a movie. Someone should write them an anonymous letter. Sure, write anonymous letters. Report them to the police. Put them in jail. The guy has to be punished because he has a big heart. Oh, pipe down, Pete. I told you never to argue with the customers. Sorry. I think it's all a lot of hooey. You know what I heard? A man comes to see the pretty Amandola girl every day in a big car. We can't hear you. Louder. A man comes to see their daughter every day in a big car. That's true. He's a Broadway agent. What about him? You like a little uh, strawberry? Sure, sure. He's the individual that floods Amandola with money on account of that girl. Some whipped cream. Love it. That's what I say about actors. People like the Amandolas can contaminate a whole community. Just like one rotten apple in a barrel. Pete! Pete! Oh, oh, I forgot the sherry. What'll it be? Bourbon and water. Hi, Pete. Oh, hi. Say, I had dinner at the drugstore. And I heard you pushed a chocolate sundae into a perfectly good customer's kisser. Is it true? No, it was a banana delight. You're hurt, Pete. Who hurt you, boy? Nobody. I just counted my money, and I discovered I was 16 cents short of my first million. That makes me sad. Listen, Pete. If you're open for a proposition, I know how to make some real dough. Get this. A friend of mine... Look, Eddie, why don't you make like a ballerina and dance away? Here, stick this in the jukebox and play something loud. This friend of mine is drilling for oil in California. He's down 9,000 feet. Got 500 more to go. So now, now it's oil stocks. Don't you ever give up, Mulligan? But, Pete, for only two Gs, you can grab yourself 20% interest and become a millionaire in no time. Are you out of your mind? Where would I get $2,000? How about asking your old man? Oh, don't be ridiculous. My father gets a small pension. He's very happy if he can make ends meet. That's what you think, Junior. My brother-in-law, who happens to be a policeman at the bank, says that old man of yours has been cashing pretty large checks for weeks now. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I did see him coming out of the bank once, and he gets a letter from them every week. You see? All you have to do is ask him to back you. What father could refuse such a proposition? Tell me, Mulligan, is this really on the level? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll introduce you to my friend. He'll show you the papers. And besides, he'll give you all the security you want. I'll see you tomorrow. There must be a screw loose in your head. Who's got 2,000? What 2,000? Pa, I know you have it. You've been seen in the bank cashing large checks lately. That's a lie. Now get out. I don't want to hear any more about it. 
But I'll pay you back. I'll repay you ten times over. But I haven't got it, I tell you. I haven't got it. Pa, you must give it to me. You simply must. <laughs> Get out, you crazy fool. Get out before I break that blasted tube over your head. Get out! join you? No. No, not at all. I, uh, I want to talk to you. What is it, Pete? Well, that is, I, I have no right to say this, but... Oh, say it anyhow, Pete. It might be something I'd like to hear. Well, it's the money your father's spending. They think it's coming from Davis. From Phil? Yeah. They say he's in love with you. You don't believe that, do you, Pete? I can see how anyone might get a wrong impression. About Phil and me, I mean. But there isn't anything between us, Pete. I can't explain to you about the money because there just isn't any explanation, but... Oh, there's no need for one. Not about Davis or the money or... or anything. Then what is it, Pete? Why are we sitting here like this when all you have to say is... Rosalinda. All right, suppose I am in love with you. That's not enough. Two thousand dollars plus more luck than I dare hope for. And we might be able to do something about it. A marriage license only costs two dollars. Yeah, but how could we live? We could manage. How? By putting windows in my tuba and converting it into a Quonset hut? My mother and father didn't have a penny when they were married. And Papa said that that was the happiest time in their whole lives. Very true. Yeah, that's great. But I can't even juggle. We'll have to take that up the first thing in the morning. But why must we have $2,000? It's an oil deal. And it might come in. And then again, it might not. But if it did... Ah, uh, what's the use trying to dream my way out of it? Pete, maybe Papa could lend you the money. Maybe. But $2,000? You can ask him. I'm sorry, Rosalinda. I'm superstitious about borrowing money that comes from heaven. eavesdropping or that I meant to listen. It was just that I had to get up and fill my cold water bottle. You see, my feet get very hot at night. I, uh, hope we didn't disturb you. What disturbs me is this idea you got about Rosalinda and this guy Davis. Believe me, there's nothing to it. Why, if you'd look with your heart instead of your eyes, you could see where our best intentions are. Look, Mr. Amendola, it isn't Rosalinda, it's me. Sure it's you. I heard what you says about being broke. And if you ask me, 
I think you'd get up and go as got up and went. What you need is confidence. And listen, about that $2,000, oh. I'd be very glad to. Uh, I couldn't take your money, Mr. Amendola. Of course, the oil might come in, but right now it's just a hole in the ground in California. So what? Uncle Sam put the money in a hole in the ground, and it turned out to be Fort Knox. And I could take a risk, too. But let's talk about it in the morning. Mama, where's Rosalinda? Went for a walk with the boy next door. You know, Papa, I think that's getting serious. Serious? Oh, they might get married and have a couple of kids, but that's as far as it'll go. Oh, Papa. Mama, remember this? Vaguely. Some boy who was courting me used to sing it to me 22 years ago. Who was that now? Was it the wealthy cattleman from Montana or that drummer from Boston? Mama, that was me. <laughs> of course it was, Papa. And I've been singing myself to sleep with it ever since. Sing it, Papa. Take an L, take an O, and take a B. Take a wobble you, another wobble you, another wobble you. Take a park, a bench beneath the tree. I remember. To that L.V. Then add an E. Take a curl, a ring, a little I do. A house in the country for just me and you. And then soon they will be one, two, or three. Little wobble you, little wobble you, little wobble you. Yes, gentlemen. We're not together. I'm Lieutenant Saunders, police. I'm looking for a man named Louis Amendola. That's me. I'm Inspector Taney, Bureau of Internal Revenue. May I come in? Sure. Sure. What did you do, Papa? I don't know. Unless I've been burning the incinerator after hours. Gentlemen, this is my wife. Well, uh... All we need is the FBI. Oh, pardon me. Callahan, FBI. Are you Mr. Amendola? Yes, sir. Won't you come in? Thanks. Me and my big fat mouth. Mr. Amendola, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Do you mind? Now, I was here first. Mr. Amendola, the Department of Internal Revenue would like some information regarding your source of income. What income? We got a report. Please, you... may I? We have a report showing you've been spending large sums of money, the source of which is not indicated in your previous income tax reports. We're a little curious, Mr. Amendola, to know where the money's coming from. We saved a lot when we were the human pyramid, and I took that money and I invested it wisely. I'll have you know that I've majored in economics at Krampus College. Krampus? Never heard of that college. Why, that's like saying you never heard of Joe Chunkus. Who's he? He's the president of Krampus. Mr. Amendola, we're not interested in your education. We just want to know where you're getting the money. All right, gentlemen. I'll tell you the truth. I'm the long-lost son of a very wealthy typhoon. When I was only two days old, my nurse turned her back while I was making a change, and I was stolen from the cradle by a band of starving gypsies. And a few months ago, the king of the gypsies came and told me who my father was. A 
see you don't believe me. All right, I'll tell you the truth. I was down at the beach digging with my pail and shovel, when suddenly my shovel struck the top of an iron-bound chest. Pirate's treasure, eh? That's right. That does it. Look here, Amandola. You've been reported for everything from swiping tires off of baby carriages to operating your own mint. Now, what's your racket? Please leave him alone. Why can't we tell him the truth, darling? It's so simple. All right, lady. What is the truth? Where does the money come from? From heaven. Well, that explains everything. But it's the truth. It comes straight from heaven. Fifteen hundred dollars every week. On the dot. I like the one about the pirates just better. Come on, Amandola. Let's get on and tell it to the boys at the station. But I can prove it. I can prove every word now, of it. Now, Mrs. Amandola, how can you prove it? It's easy. I put this old rocking chair in the middle of the room. Sit down there and say a little prayer. And when I say, Rosalinda needs shoes. The money comes down like rain. All right, Mrs. Amandola, show us. Pull up the chair and say the prayer. Wait a minute. She can't do it today. The miracle happens on Thursday, between 3 and 3.30. All right, we'll be here Thursday at 3. Thursday at 3. done the same thing if you'd invested your money instead of hiding it. Mom's an Amandola garage. Look, look at that. No, I won't look. And don't stop every second. I'm getting tired of this thing. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to raise Amandola's rent again, as of today. Come on. Frank. Due to the increased cost of living, I must raise the rent of this place. Again? This is the eighth time you've raised the rent since we moved in, Mr. Dingle. You're forcing me to join Landlords Anonymous. Well, you can move out if you want to. Let's not be too hasty, Mr. Dingle. You might be right. Maybe the cost of living has increased. I would know. I haven't done today's shopping yet. Uh, how much more do you want? Uh, $30. $30? $125 a month? Why, it's robbery. Well, if you think that, you can start packing right now. Oh, he didn't mean that, Mr. Dingle. Did you, Papa? Of course not. I apologize, Mr. Dingle. Why, for only $125 a month, where else could you find a place where the sunshine comes streaming through the keyhole all day? You're right. You can't take advantage of me like you've been doing with a lot of bankrupt shop owners. Now, look here, Dingle. I only helped those fellas out because no one else would. And besides, I'm not making money on all those investments. For instance, your son's oil venture. I'll surely lose the 2000 I invested in that. You deserve to. He couldn't take me for his sucker. I wouldn't give him a nickel. If you did, you'd probably shortchange him, you tight old buzzard. Oh, that's done it. Another word out of you and I'll punch you in the nose. Why, you uh... Oh, Papa, Papa, Mr. Dingle. Why, you two should be friends. If only for our children's sake. They love one another. Papa, who knows, they might get married someday. No son of mine will ever marry a girl with your daughter's reputation. Now, why, get out! Oh. Get out! Get out! Oh. oh, Papa! Papa, the chair! It's broken! Get me some nails and glue. I'll fix it. Hurry! It's almost time to pray!
We are sorry to inform you to... Katie. 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 Yes, Frank? Our gold mine is exhausted. There'll be no more checks in. Uh -uh. <laughs> Get going, Amandola. It's almost 3.30. Okay. All right, Mama. Say it. Rosalinda needs shoes. Oh, lovely. Gentlemen, gentlemen, a little patience. Fifteen hundred dollars is a lot of money. Sometimes we've got to ask twice. Try it again, Mama. Try it again. Rosalinda needs shoes. Once again. Once again. Rosalinda needs shoes. I guess you're right, Mama. It seems the miracle is over. <laughs> I threw away $1,500 a week when I threw this chair. It's not the chair. It's, we have no excuse to ask for any more. You're right, Mama. But we're doing all right now. There's a lot of poor people praying in this world. Now it's their turn for miracles. I'm moving out of this shack the first thing tomorrow morning. Now even my cigarettes don't come down. I'm afraid you're not gonna have to wait till the first thing tomorrow morning. You're beginning to move now, down to the station. Not so fast, Lieutenant. This is a tax matter. He goes with me. Wait a minute, both of you. I don't know what kind of a matter this is, but he's going with me for general questioning. You can question him at the station house. I don't want to question him at your station house. I want to question him at my field office. I don't care where either one of you question him. Right now, he's going with me. Over my broken and splintered body, he is. I have no objection to taking him over your broken and splintered body. What do you think of that? Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's have cooperation. Let him go with me. Good night, Pete. Good night, Rosalinda. Mama, Mama, what's the matter? Oh, it's nothing, Rosalinda. These gentlemen don't quite understand where we're getting our money from. So I'm going downtown and explain it. You stay here with Mother. Is there anything I can do, Mr. Amadola? Oh, yeah. Pardon us a moment, will you? Look, Pete, I don't know how long I'm going to be gone. Kind of keep an eye on things around here till I get back, will you? Oh, sure, sure. But this trouble, is it serious? There's nothing to it. <laughs> with time off for good behavior? I only get life. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, whose car do I go in? Mine. Oh, no, I smell smoke. So do I. But, Dad, Mr. Amadola's in serious trouble. Maybe the $2,000 would help him. You've got to give it to him. I think you should, Frank. After all, if Mr. Amadola helps Pete... Helped him how? To make an idiot out of himself by giving him $2,000 for that crook Belligan. I won't do it, I tell you. I won't give Amandola one penny. Let him fry in his own fat. He belongs in jail anyhow. But, Dad, this is important. Frank, you're just a hard-hearted, money hearted Tell it to him. I'm going upstairs where I don't have to listen to either one of you. Oh, man. 
hair rug with the radio inside. I'll miss the Jimmy the Ranny show. Don't get any of my money, no, sir. Good heavens, I'm not insured. <laughs> you have a very smart father. He trusts nobody but the hole behind the bed. Oh, Pete, I'm so glad you're all right. Thousands of dollars burning right now. Brand new, crisp hundred dollar bills. He put in the hole behind his bed. It's every Thursday, fifteen hundred dollars. Now it's all gone. <laughs> Rosalinda needs shoes, huh? Now pull yourself together, Mr. Dingle. I'll rebuild the house. It'll be better than new. <laughs> Mr. Holmes. You will? I don't know what to say. Oh, it's perfectly all right, Mrs. Dingle. Why, anything to help a good neighbor. The way I see it, now this is very definitely only a tax matter. This makes things much simpler. What do you mean, simpler? Who owes the tax? Amandolo or this other guy? Well, naturally, but... Hmm? I guess Amandolo. I don't know. They both had incomes. Maybe they both owe us. Well, how do you figure? It was this other fellow's income. Sure. Amandolo was only innocently using the other guy's money. It was like a gift. Well, in that case, this man not only owes income tax, but he'll have to pay us gift tax, too. As far as I'm concerned, the local law is no longer interested. Looks like it's out of my jurisdiction, too. It's too involved for me. I'm gonna forget all about it till March 15th. What'd you find? Nothing but a dead squirrel. Why, he isn't dead. He's just overcome by smoke. All he needs is a little fresh air. I wonder what he was doing in the house. That's a place for a little squirrel to be. <laughs> My good old Rupert. Oh, you haven't changed a bit. You smell a little smoky, though. Now tell me, how was it? How did the other squirrels treat you? Were they good? Greetings, Mr. and Mrs. Dingle. Mr. Amendola. <laughs> For your new home, Mrs. Dingle. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Papa. Make your speech, Papa. Oh, uh, Mr. Dingle, like a caterpillar has its cocoon, like a bird has its nest, like the worm has its, uh, apple, believe me, it's a pleasure to present you with the key to your new home. Mr. Amendola, you're the finest, the noblest, the most generous. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Mr. Dingle. I'm glad he did. I'm overwhelmed. 
I can't find words enough. To... Words, words. To what are words? If it'll make you any happier, Mr. Dingle, I'll even carry you across the threshold. Oh, Thank you, I'm Mr. Amendola. <laughs> you like it. My little wife crocheted the Durleys, but I'll have to take credit for the curtains. I would have done a much better job, only my pink and she's were dull. Pete! Mulligan! Why, you dirty no, dog! No, 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 wait a minute! Wait a minute! Let no, me I go, Pete! Let have... me go! We're rich, Pete, rich! The oil is coming like a geyser! What? The wall came in. <laughs> Rosie! Come down here, quick! The Melody for Two Orphan Instruments by Peter Dingle. You did this, Rosalinda. You see, Dad, what I mean about taking a risk? Taking a risk, Pete? When are you going to ask me to marry you? Right now. They're going to get married! Rosalinda! <laughs> Pete! Oh! <laughs> Amendola, my friend. Dingle old pal. <laughs> <laughs> 